Hey. Okay, I'm good here. That's a great necklace. Thank sure. you. So, Jen, you've covered Royal, you're a Royal correspondent, you've covered them for years. What do you think defines a princess? Well, oh, that's, that's a really tricky question, but obviously they've got to be um, a good person, um, an enchanting person, a person of the people, um, someone who really wants to use their role to make a bit of a difference helps. I mean, some people are born princesses and, uh, you know, you, you, you get what you, what you get, really, quite frankly. But people like Tiana or Diana um, grew into the role of, of princess. It's not something they were born to. And I think both of them, and that's an interesting parallel, um, make the role something special. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting. To, Tiana is a modern day princess, really. She puts yeah. her career first. Do you think women and princesses in general can have it all? No, I don't think they can. It mm -hmm. is very difficult. Um, I mean, we had the Countess of Wessex, uh, not strictly a princess, but married one of the Queen's sons. And she tried very hard to have a career, Sophie, um, in um, PR, but it just didn't work. Um, I don't remember, you remember the story of the fake sheikh who um, tricked her into giving away various family secrets. It's very difficult to have a proper in the world career and be royal, but you can use your, your role for very good works and to good effect in the way that Diana did with um, causes such as AIDS and with leprosy and um, also with the land mines in Angola and elsewhere. I mean, she could spearhead campaigns um, in the way that Tiana realizes her more practical dream of um, running a restaurant. Right. What has shocked you the most about following royalty over the years in terms of maybe good or bad? What's shocked me? is really the fact that it just comes at you like a machine gun, really. <laughs> One, actually, I used to think it was like a tidal wave. Um, wave after wave of major events would come and you'd swim and swim and swim and get them on air and try and do them justice. And then another one would come. You know, it would be, it would be Fergie found topless with her toes being sucked in the south of France. Um, it, it could be a death or a divorce, you know, that you weren't expecting. Good gracious, I was in the middle of covering an election campaign when um, Fergie and Andrew decided to get separated um, uh, and that was like a bombshell to all of us because we'd expected Charles and Diana maybe but not Fergie and they always just took us by surprise they really did <laughs> you can never expect what's going on it's going to happen next right no it absolutely kept me on my toes throughout and what did you think of this movie in particular in comparison to other Disney movies with the princesses always seem to vie for the prince here it seems like love kind of found her Indeed, this is a true love story. And I, I think it's so charming in the way, obviously it's um, hand drawn, which I don't know kids will realize, but I think they will pick up the, the complete charm of the film because it's been produced in the way it has been produced. And it's just a wonderful little love story. Part of me wishes they'd both stayed at frogs though and been really different prince and princess frog. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, that would have been maybe a sequel. <laughs> yes, there we are, we can turn them back again. <laughs> and is there anything else that you enjoy covering in addition to royalty that just gets you so excited that really sparks your interest? Well, what I like doing now is um, having a completely change of career. And although I do still comment a great deal on royalty, um, I've set myself free. And I now do absolutely crazy things like you know, game shows and panel shows. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. I get myself buried underground in a coffin full of rats. I eat all sorts of ghastly bugs. And I do crazy shows. And that's very liberating for a lady in her late 50s to um, challenge herself with, with new, new uh, events and a new career. It's lovely. What's next for you? What are you working on? That's right what now? I like. I don't know. Well, I do know. I do an antiques show and a cookery show and a consumer affairs show. Um, and in between that, I do completely nutsy uh, panel games. I've just done one called The King is Dead, actually, oh, in wow. which uh, apparently the, the, the king was dead. And I had to apply, along with one of the judges from The X Factor, um, to, of the job of being um, king. Um, and it was totally bizarre, I have to tell you. But I won. I became king. <laughs> How do you juggle it all? It sounds like you're involved in a lot of different projects. Oh, well, I, I work pretty hard and I try to have a home life as well. I have a bit more of a home life now than I used to when I was royal correspondent because then forever I was being tugged back to the office. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you loved it. Oh, I did. It was it was good time I and mean, there were very good years to, you could not have been royal correspondent um, at a more difficult um, and tumultuous time that, than I was royal correspondent. It was just firing at you constantly. Great, thank you so much. A pleasure, thank you. Well done.